First in the spotlight tonight is Lawrence Ricard from Horrible Histories, his specialist subject, the Indiana Jones films. <laughs> Next, the wildlife presenter, Martin Hughes James. He'll be answering questions on evil in war. The model, Vogue Williams, takes as her subject, Kim Kardashian. And the BBC's deputy political editor, John Keenar, on William Gladstone. Welcome to Celebrity Mastermind with me, John Humphreys, and four contenders about to take a step into the unknown. They may think they've mastered their specialist subjects, but they can't possibly know how they will react to the lights and the clock and the black chair and, of course, the general knowledge questions. Two minutes on that, but first, 90 seconds on their specialist subject. So let's ask our first contender to join us, please. And your name is? Lawrence Rickard. Your chosen charity? Is the Cystic Fibrosis Trust. And your chosen subject? Is Advanced Astrophysics. In 90 seconds, starting now. Who... What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> so nearly got away with that. What if I'd asked you questions on Advanced Astrophysics? Have you got some? I can hey? give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've both come unstuck I, quite quickly. I, I tell you what, we'll, we'll do something else a bit easier instead. Okay. Right. Go on, okay. take a choice. Take a pick. Um, let's try the Indiana Jones. Thing. All right, we'll do Indiana okay. Jones instead. Here we go, 90 seconds starting. Now, who plays the young Indiana in the opening sequences of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, where he tries to save the Cross of Coronado from treasure hunters? River Phoenix. Yep. Who composed the music for all four Indiana Jones films? John Williams. Yep. What's the name of the secret place where the Ark of the Covenant was kept in ancient Tanis? It could only be found by holding the Staff of Ra in the correct position in the map room. Well of Souls. Yep. What does Indy hide in to save himself from a nuclear test blast in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? A fridge. Yeah. In Raiders of the Lost Ark, what does one of Indy's students have written on her eyelids when he's telling his class about the Neolithic barrow at Turk Dean? Love You? Yeah. Which song does Willie Scott sing, mostly in Mandarin, in the Obi-Wan nightclub over the opening credits of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom? Anything goes. Yes. Indy's hatred of what creatures is mentioned in all the films? It possibly stems from when he fell into a box of them as a young man on a circus train in The Last Crusade. Snakes. Yep. What is served as the dessert after dishes, including snake surprise and eyeball soup, at the Maharaja's banquet in the Temple of Doom? Chilled monkey brain. Yes, what else? The what does Shorty use to break Indy out of his black sleep of Kalimar state in the Temple of Doom? He later does the same for the Maharaja. Uh, flaming torch? Yep. Who autographs the Grail diary after Indy and his father retrieve it from Elsa in Berlin in The Last Crusade? Hitler. Yeah. What is the name of the Russian Colonel Doctor played by Kate Blanchett in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? Spalco. Yep. In The Last Crusade, it is revealed that Indy's real name is Henry Jones Jr. Who or what does his father say originally had the name Indiana? The dog. The dog. The family dog. It was indeed no passes. And you have scored, Lawrence. Don't know whether you've done better with astrophysics, but you've got 12 points. <laughs> And our next contender, please. And your name is? Martin Hughes Games. Your chosen charity? Is the British Trust for Ornithology. And your chosen subject? Is the life and books of Evelyn War. Great evening, War in 90 seconds. Starting now, the hero of War's first novel, Decline and Fall, is a young man who was sent down from Oxford after his trousers are stolen by members of the Bollinger Club. What's his name? <laughs> Paul Pennyfeather. Yes. William Boot, the writer of the Lush Places Nature column, is mistakenly sent to Ishmaelia as a war correspondent. Which newspaper does he write for? The Beast. Yes, the Daily Beast. What piece of household equipment does Colonel Blount think Adam Sykes has come to demonstrate when he first arrives at Doubting Hall? A Hoover. Yeah, vacuum cleaner. Which of War's novels first published in 1953 depicts a dystopian state and is subtitled A Romance of the Near Future? Love Among the Ruins. Yep. What reason did War give to John Freeman for agreeing to be interviewed by him on the BBC television programme Face to Face? Money. Yeah, poverty. In Brideshead Revisited, when Charles Ryder first sees Sebastian Flight, Flight's holding a big teddy bear. What's the bear called? Aloysius. Yes. In Black Mischief, the Emperor Seth is overthrown in a coup that takes place during a pageant. What is the pageant promoting? 
uh, birth control. Yep. In 1944, Wall was second in command to a British Army officer on a diplomatic mission to Croatia, during which they were both in a plane crash. Who was the other officer? Pass. Major Ludovic goes to see a famous sword on display in Westminster Abbey and later writes a sonnet about it. What's the name of the sword? Uh, the Sword of Honour. Sword of Stalingrad. What was the name of Wall's history tutor at Oxford? He used it for a series of foolish characters in some of his early novels. Crutwell. Yep. William Booth's sister mischievously inserted the name of a bird instead of the word badger throughout one of his nature columns. Which bird? The grebe. Yes, the crested grebe. You uh, had one pass, Martin. In 1944, war was second in command to Randolph Churchill. Oh, of course he was. Mm. You have scored nine points. <laughs> And our next contender, please. And your name is? Vogue Williams. Your chosen charity? The Stroke Association. And your chosen subject? Kim Kardashian. In 90 seconds, here we go. In May 2014, Kim Kardashian married Kanye West at a 16th century fortress in which Italian city? Florence. Yep. What's the name of the fashion store branded as a one-stop contemporary women's boutique that the Dash. Kardashians insisted open in Calabas, California, 2006? Dash. Yep. For which magazine's winter 2014 cover was she photographed with a champagne glass balanced on a bottom next to a tagline that said, break the internet? Paper. Yep. What is the name of Kardashian and Kanye West's son who was born in December 2015? December 5th, uh, Saint. Yes. Who designed the Givenchy floral gown that she wore at the 2013 Met Gala? It's been described as a frumpy Mrs Doubtfire dress. Ricardo Tisci? Yep. Kardashian was robbed in a luxury guest apartment on the 3rd of October 2016 in which city? Paris. Yep. For which 2008 film was Kardashian nominated for her first Golden Raspberry Award? In the category of Worst Supporting Actress, she lost to Paris Hilton. Pass. Some of her father's ancestors are from which country? She visited there in April 2015 and met the Prime Minister. Armenia. Yep. Before Kardashian found fame with Keeping Up with the Kardashians, she briefly appeared in another reality series that starred Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. What was it called? The Simple Life. Yes, in May 2011. Who proposed to her in her candlelit bedroom with a message written in red rose petals that said, Will you marry me? Chris Humphreys. Yes. Which long-term executive producer of Keeping Up with the Kardashians hosted the programme's 10-year anniversary special episode in September 2017? Ryan Seacrest. Correct. In March 2012, she was flower bond on the red carpet at the London West Hollywood Hotel during the launch event for which of her fragrances? Um, gold. True reflection. True reflection. That's what it says here. <laughs> um, one past Vogue, that 2008 <laughs> film for which she was nominated for the Golden Raspberry Award, disaster movie. Yes. How appropriate. You um, <laughs> have scored Vogue ten points. Woo, thank you. <laughs> And our final contender, please. And your name is? John Pina. Your chosen charity? Macmillan Cancer Care. And your chosen subject? William Gladstone. William Gladstone in 90 seconds, starting now. Gladstone served four times as Prime Minister. He was first elected to Parliament in 1832, aged only 22 as a Tory MP for which constituency? Newark. Yep, Queen Victoria famously complained that during their audiences, Gladstone addressed her as though she was a... Public meeting. Yes, who described Gladstone in April 1839 as the rising hope of those stern and unbending Tories? Thomas Macaulay. Yep, in 1852, Gladstone became the Chancellor of the Exchequer for the first time in a coalition government. Who was the Prime Minister? Lord Aberdeen. He was. What? painful and debilitating skin infection did Gladstone have an attack of in September 1853? His daughter, Agnes, also had the condition. Epicenius. Yes, Edisipolis. Gladstone resigned as the president of the Board of Trade in 1845 over his objections to a grant to which Irish Catholic seminary? The Maynooth Seminary. Yep. What government bill did Gladstone make 73 speeches against in Parliament in 1857? Would you repeat the question? What government bill did Gladstone make 73 speeches against in Parliament in 1857? Pass. Which radical reformer did Gladstone appoint as the President of the Board of Trade when he became Prime Minister for the first time in December 1868? Uh, Chamberlain. 
John Bright. When Gladstone left the Tories and joined Lord Palmerston's Liberal Government of 1859, he supported Richard Cobden's proposal for a free trade agreement with which country? France. Yes, which Irish nationalist leader denounced Gladstone in 1881 as this masquerading knight errant, this pretending champion of the rights of every nation except those of the Irish nation? Charles Stuart Parnell. It was indeed. And that one you passed on, he made 73 speeches against the divorce and matrimonial causes bill. It says here, John, you've got eight points. <laughs> well, a very close first round. Let's have a look at all of those scores. In fourth place, eight points, John. Third place, nine points, Martin. Second place, ten points, Vogue. First place, 12 points, Lawrence. So, which is the general knowledge round now, and if there's a tie at the end of it, then the number of passes is taken into account, and the person with the fewer passes is the winner. Let's get on with it. Ask John to join us again, please. And, uh, John, you've been a political correspondent, now deputy editor, of course, for a very long time. And I wonder how many times you've heard people say, as everybody is saying now, God, we've never gone through a period like this before. Yes, they're all saying it now. Um, it, yeah. We haven't. I've covered politics for 35 years, and at a certain point, two, three years ago, you think you've more or less seen everything. Now I'm seeing things I've never seen almost every week... Such as? ..that passes. The condition of the Premiership, the condition of the government, the condition of the opposition, the state of public opinion, the next thing that's going to happen, the amount that's at stake, and more is at stake at this time in our politics, easily, than at any time since World War II. Because of Brexit. Because of Brexit. Also something that's going on around the world, of which Brexit may conceivably be a part. But in this country, we haven't seen anything like this, and we really don't know where we are going. Right, John, you've got eight points. Uh, plenty of time to catch up and overtake the field, because you have two minutes of general knowledge starting now. In Doctor Who, which of the Doctor's adversaries say exterminate before doing just that to their enemies? The Daleks. Yep, what Battle of 1066 is depicted in the final existing sections of the Bayeux Tapestry? Hastings. Yep, what mild crumbly cheese, named after a northern county, is one of the oldest in England. It's normally whitish in colour, but there's a red variety coloured with anatto and a blue variety. Um, pass. Who won her third Best Actress Oscar for a role as Queen Eleanor of Aquitaine in the 1968 film The Lion in Winter? Uh, Catherine Hepburn? Yes. Which town in the centre of Australia is named after a nearby waterhole that was itself named for the wife of a government official? Alice. Yes, that explains what instrument for listening to sounds in the chest cavity did the French doctor René Lanet invent in about 1816 because putting an ear to somebody's chest caused him embarrassment. Stethoscope. Yep. In Tennyson's poem, In Memoriam A.H.H., what follows the line, "'Tis better to have loved and lost... ..than never to have loved at all." Yes, with which chart-topping song did Brotherhood of Man win the 1976 Eurovision Song Contest? Say your kisses for me. Yes, what is the minimum age for a juror in a British court? 18. Yes, the Turner Prize-winning British artist Chris O'Feely has used the dry dung of a large mammal in many of his works. What mammal? Cow. Elephant. The old part of which American city is known as the French Quarter or the Vieux Carré? New Orleans. Yes, what was the name of the daredevil Blue Peter presenter whose constant companion on the programme from 71 was his border collie Shep? John Noakes. Yep. What small variety of chicken gives its name to a very lightweight in boxing? A bantamweight. Yes. In which Italian city does Donna Leon set her series of detective novels featuring Commissario Brunetti? Uh, Naples. Venice. In the lyrics of a song, an iconic American highway runs from Chicago to L.A. more than 2,000 miles all the way. Which highway? Uh, highway 66. Yes, Route 66. Which tennis player became the youngest woman to be ranked world number one in 1997? She partnered Jamie Murray to win mixed doubles titles at Wimbledon and the U.S. Open in 2017. Pass. The Singapura is the smallest recognised overall breed of which domestic animal? Cat. What? Cat. Cat is right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look confident, John, as if you knew it all along. <laughs> Cat is absolutely right. Your pass is Martina Hingis, was the tennis player who did so well, and that mild crumbly cheese is Cheshire. You have scored, however, John, a total of 21 points. Martin again, please. 
And before you even sit down, I have to ask you about that wonderful jacket. Or rock, tunic, what do you call it? It's a shawani. It, oh. It's a shawani. I got married in it. It's a, a, a traditional Indian dress. It's beautiful. It's rather nice, isn't it? I thought I'd give it an outing. Special occasion, special coat. Right, let's talk about nature and the, the contrast between your programme and, say, Blue Planet. We always call our programme a show rather than a documentary. So we try to be um, entertaining as well. And it's very different because, of course, it's live. There's no script, there's no auto cue. We can pretty much say what we want, and Chris often does. <laughs> yes. Um, and I should say, of course, it is called Spring Watch, and you also have all the other seasons. Yes. Watching. Which season is best to watch from your point of view? It's got to be Spring Watch because um, it's taken ten years to get this good at putting cameras on the little birds' nests. There's real drama in those nests. Martin? 21 is now the score to beat. Let's see how you do in your general knowledge. Here we go. What type of shoes gave Elvis Presley his second British chart entry in 1956? Blue suede shoes. Yes. Which French scientist gives his name to the heat treatment of liquids such as milk so that harmful organisms are destroyed without altering the flavour and nutritional value? Pasta. Yep. The worst speciality lava bread is prepared from a variety of what marine plant? A seaweed. Yep. Which English dramatists' works include How the Other Half Loves and The Norman Conquests? Pass. Which spa town in Kent was granted the royal prefix by Edward VII in 1909 in recognition of its many past royal visitors? Tunbridge Wells. Yes. For what 2016 film set in the Pacific during the Second World War did Mel Gibson receive a Best Director nomination? Pearl Harbor. Hacksaw Ridge. What name was coined by Paracelsus for a tincture of opium that became popular in the 19th century for medicinal and recreational purposes? Pass. Which group had their first number one hit single with Heart of Glass in 1979? Pass. <laughs> the last episode of a school drama created by Phil Redmond was televised in September 2008, some 30 years after the first episode. Which school drama? Hollyoaks. Grange Hill, in which northern Indian city is the Taj Mahal mausoleum? Uh, it's all gone out my head now. <laughs> I've been there. Agra. Yes. On which ship did the first Pilgrim Fathers successfully set out from Plymouth in September 1620 on their way to the New World? The Mayflower. Yes. What French term is used for the ornamental style of art that flourished in Europe and America in the 1890s and early 1900s? Uh, uh... Pass. Which Surrey golf course has hosted the European Tour flagship event, the PGA Championship, since 1984? Pass. <laughs> Which Conservative MP and father of the house, known for his love of cricket, Nottingham Forest and jazz, released the book Kind of Blue, a political memoir, in 2016? <laughs> I could tell you, look, I'll save you from yourself, because we're <laughs> out of time. And once you start passing, it can... It does, doesn't it? Yes, it's, it's, it's horrendous. It is strange, isn't it, how it happens mm. like that? Anyway, Ken Clark. Ken Clark, of course it was, and, yeah. and of course you knew that. Wentworth is the Surrey yes, Golf Yes, I knew course. that as well. Art Nouveau, the Art French Nouveau, term yeah. for the ornament, you knew that as well. Yes. Blondie was the group, don't know whether oh, you yes, knew that. Oh, yes, of course yeah, it was. Yeah, Blondie. <laughs> uh, Laudanum, that tincture <laughs> of that opium. Well. And Alan Akebourne was the English dramatist, whose works include How the Other Half Loves and so on. So there you go. You could have got all of those, and it, had it not been for the black chair, etc., you probably would have. As it is, Martin, you have a total of 15 points. Thank you. Vogue again, please. And uh, you chose Kim Kardashian as your subject. I Vogue. do realise how ridiculous that seems. Well, you sort of almost answered my first question in a way, because <laughs> it, my first question was going to be, what is it about her? I we're all so fascinated she's by she's just incredible. She, uh, people might call her talentless or whatever, but she has a talent for business. She is able to keep people interested in a reality show going on a decade now, and everyone loves And doing family. nothing, really. I just think that they're quite a normal family. I, like, I mean, normal. Obviously. Well, <laughs> like normal in a way, the way they act, interact with each other, and everything like that. Like nothing, obviously, about their life is normal. But the way they act with each other would remind me of like me and my sisters. Even her bum is interesting. I mean, it's like, <laughs> how is your bum like that? Why is her like? I'm fascinated by everything about her. Well, you did very well with her. You've got ten, as it were. You've got ten points. So twenty-one, still the score to beat. Let's see how you, you do. <gasps> Here we go. In English pantomime, what name is given to the leading comic female role traditionally played by a man? Pass. 
The 2017 biographical drama Babs featured Samantha Spiro and Jamie Winston as an older and a younger version of a comedy actress. Which actress? Oh, the girl from EastEnders. I forget her name, pass. OK. Uh, Barbara which, Windsor. It, <laughs> too late. Which is the most southerly of the mainland states of the United States of America? Well, I didn't hear what you said. Which is the most southerly of the mainland states of the United States of America? Ah, uh, pass. With which song did Eric Prince top the UK singles charts for five weeks in 2004? Mm, pass. What is the name of Bob Cratchit's sickly son in Dickens' Christmas Carol? Scrooge changes his ways after he sees the child's death in a dream. Pass. What region of the Outer Hebrides, often thought of as a separate island, is famous for the tweed traditionally made there? Aaron. Harris. Which actor, best known for his film portrayal of a boy wizard, played Rosencrantz in a 2017 London production of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead? Daniel Radcliffe? Yes. yes. Master James of St George designed <laughs> many buildings for Edward I that are still standing in North Wales. What are those buildings? Not a clue, pass. What alteration to clocks, abbreviated to BST, was introduced in 1916? GST? British summertime. The rediscovered wreck of a liner that sank in 1912 was explored in 1986 by a submarine called Alvin and a robot called Jason Jr. Which liner? Pass. In which city was Adrian Mole living when he wrote his first diary at the age of 13 and three quarters? Dublin? Leicester. <laughs> what name that came into use in the 18th century is given to the Scottish broth of chicken and leeks? Chicken. Pass. What is the common name for either of the triangular bones known as the scapula in the upper part of the human body? Collarbone? The shoulder blade. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, he had a few passes there. Quite Just a few. Just a few. Quite a few. Uh, Cockaleaky is the name of that Scottish broth. The Titanic was the ship that... Oh, that's Yeah, desperate. I know. Edward I <laughs> built lots of castles. Tiny Tim was Bob Cratchit's son. Call on Me was Eric Pritz's song. Florida's the most southerly state of America. And in English pantomime, it's the dame. You know, the no, man know who plays the... Comp well, you're not English, are you? Yeah, you asked me loads of English questions. That's what happened. That's what it is. <laughs> I knew there was a reason for it. Anyway, look, you're in double figures, so there you go. You've Thank got you. 11 points. Thank you. <laughs> and finally, Lawrence again, please. And uh, Horrible History has been going... For eight years on the telly, a lot longer in books. Yes, I think over 20 years now yeah. in books. What's the balance between making them laugh and helping them learn? It was very tricky initially when the show was sort of being developed, finding that balance, because it's very easy to throw, make a punchline. Normally a punchline of a joke is the ridiculous thing at the end. But if we make something up, then kids grow up knowing the wrong facts. So we had to find a brand of humour that was very funny, hopefully for a kind of family audience, but which didn't lie at the end. And teachers like it, do they? There are a few who kind of go, well, you're just teaching kids about the stuff with poo. And you go, well, yeah, <laughs> but... Uh, we, got, we, give them, we give them the silly bits and, and we gave them the bits with all the gore in, and then if that develops an interest in the subject, they read around and find the broader context. And great fun, the stories. Anyway, you uh, have 12 points. Here we go, two minutes. What's the name of the prehistoric stone circle monument that stands on Salisbury plane is visible from the A303. Stonehenge. Yep. What name of Spanish origins given to the violent tropical cyclones that occur especially in the Caribbean and Western Atlantic? Hurricanes? Yep. The Humber Bridge, the Verrazano Narrows and the Golden Gate are all a particular type of bridge. What type? Suspension? Yep. Watching the Wheels, published in 2016, is the autobiography of a British former world motor racing champion whose father, Graham, also won the title. Who is he? Damon Hill. Yep. Which breed of short-legged dog, whose name means badger hound in German, was originally bred to pursue badgers into their burrows? Dachshund. Yep. What nickname was shared by the jazz pianist and composer Thomas Wright Waller and the rhythm and blues singer Antoine Domino? Fats. Yep. Which actress plays the human rights lawyer Emma Banville in the 2017 British crime thriller television drama Fearless? Pass. Choufleur is the French word for a variety of the cabbage plant family, usually served cooked. What's it called? Cauliflower. Yep. Who was elected South Africa's president in 1994 after the country held its first elections in which all races were allowed to vote? Nelson Mandela. Yes, the Bulgarian holiday resorts of Burgas and Varna lie on the coast of which large inland sea? 
Aegean? The Black Sea, which Shakespeare played that features two sets of twins, was the inspiration for the stage musical The Boys from Syracuse. Oh, pass. What name is given to an open square in an Italian town or city? Piazza? Yes. Frederick William Pomeroy's gilt bronze statue of justice stands on top of a London court building. Which building? The Old Bailey? Yes, in which American city in Utah are the headquarters of the Mormon religion? Um, pass. Whose major achievements before she turned to marathon running include a silver medal in the women's 10,000 metres at the 1999 World Athletics Championships? Paula Radcliffe? Yep. Which British writer, actor and comedian made his directorial debut in 2003 with a screen version of Evelyn Waugh's novel Vile Bodies called Bright Young Things? Pass. I shall tell you because we're out of time. Stephen Fry. Oh, of course. Yes. And the other pass is that um, city that's the headquarters of the Mormon religion, Salt Lake City. Yeah, oh, Salt Lake City. The Comedy of Errors was the Shakespeare play and Helen McGrory played Emma Vanville. You have scored, Lawrence, 23 points. All right. Stayed very close. Let's have a look at all of the scores. In fourth place, 11 points. Vogue, third place, 15 points. Martin, second place, 21 points. John, first place, 23 points. Lawrence. <laughs> but... Congratulations. Thank you very much. Oh, I don't know where. Uh... I don't know whether it has any historic value. You might be able to talk about it one day. It I'll will do in space. time. I'll bury it in the garden and make sure someone digs it up in a couple of hundred years. So yeah. Well done. Thank you very much. And um, you don't have to be a celebrity to take part in the regular Mastermind programme. If you'd like to appear in the next series on BBC Two, then do visit us online at bbc.co.uk stroke mastermind. And you can follow us on Twitter at Mastermind Quiz. Either way, do join us again next time for more Masterminds. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.